1950, it was discovered that gluten from wheat, rye, barley and oats caused celiac disease. This was a landmark. For the first time, celiac disease could be treated with a diet. Over the last 50 years, there's been refinement of the diet, but there's still no replacement for the diet. Understanding the steps that make gluten toxic in celiac disease has identified a series of steps where intervention could be used to either aid or replace the gluten-free diet. Gluten is toxic in celiac disease, first of all because it's eaten, second because it's poorly digested in the human gut. Components of the gluten are then absorbed through the tight, tight junctions in the small intestine. These are modified by an enzyme, transglutaminase, into a form that can then be bound to DQ2 and DQ8 and then activate T cells in the human intestine. It's the CD4 T cells that do the damage. The opportunities to aid the gluten-free diet are approaches that reduce the amount of gluten that is seen by the T cells. Providing a barrier to the absorption of gluten is one approach. Drugs that attempt to do this are in clinical trials in the United States. Drugs that block the enzyme transglutaminase and block the binding of gluten peptides to DQ2 are also under development. These studies are in early stage. Enzyme supplements that further digest gluten and destroy the toxic components are being developed in a number of centres. These enzyme supplements would be taken when an individual was, for example, going out for dinner or in an environment that may lead to low-level gluten exposure. The enzyme supplement would be taken frequently and therefore might improve the appearance of the intestine and reduce the damage that occurs with low-level contamination. The enzyme supplements are the most advanced of the aids to a gluten-free diet. The area that I work on is in the field of the T-cell. There's substantial evidence from studies to indicate that a vaccine, a therapy that could turn off the damaging reaction by T-cells, could be developed if the components in gluten that drive the T-cells were identified. My work and others has identified a series of gluten components and at the moment work is continuing towards designing a vaccine that could be tested in clinical trials in the coming years. The vaccine approach would be hoped to replace the gluten-free diet. The vaccine has developed because it's been possible to show the parts of gluten that are recognised by the immune system. By knowing which parts of gluten drive the immune reaction and damage the gut, it's possible to include those components in a vaccine to desensitise the immune system. The development program will take a number of years and it'll need to go through safety and efficacy studies in volunteers with celiac disease. To make these new treatments a reality, will require the work of scientists from around the world, the cooperation of people with celiac disease to be involved in research. But most importantly, it's crucial that people who are diagnosed with celiac disease have been diagnosed properly, that they have had a biopsy and gastroscopy to confirm they really do have celiac disease.